And one thing that I'm seeing, like I said, at SEC underscore StatCat, if you're not following Clark already, you're doing your life wrong here. But he is jumping on just about anybody that is not aware just how great Chris Rodriguez has been for Kentucky's offense in recent seasons. Can you explain to the folks why you're so high on Chris Rodriguez and and why it seems like you have a a vendetta against anybody that uh, speaks ill of Kentucky star running back? Well, I mean, I don't know if it's just the Kentucky, you know, aura around him. Oh, it's just Kentucky football. We don't have to pay any attention to him. But for as much acclaim and love as Benny Snell got a few years ago, this kid is like a ghost in comparison. Benny Snell, as many yards as he gained, he was not an efficient running back. Sure, it helped UK grind it out and maybe win some ball games. But, you know, from where I sit, why not like the more efficient option? Well, Looking at Mr. Rodriguez, he only was situationally successful on two-thirds of his carries last season. You know the next closest running back with at least 50 carries got? 54.9%. So about 12% higher than the next closest guy. He's head and shoulders above everyone else. Number one in the nation in first down touchdown rate. Um, he was sixth in, uh, amongst the volume guys in broken tackle rate. And, of course, anyone can follow good blocking. But what I like to look at when we separate rushers is what can they do after engagement. Anybody can run to open space. Not everyone can make a guy miss in the hole or, or, you know, beat a guy around the edge and get yards after that. So that is one area where you really like where he, what he brings to the table because guess what? Led the SEC with a 4.2 clip. Insane. It was a, a 0.4 yard higher than the next guy. I look again, he's so much on his own level in terms of the things you want. No, he doesn't break tackles like Tanks Bigsby last season, but he still gets the yards after contact, and he makes those plays matter. And even though he's not the fastest guy, Mike, I mean, who doesn't want a back that always falls forward and keeps you ahead of the chains? I mean, to, for me, who likes to pass the ball, that is the, what I want out of my running game. I want to continuously not – I don't want to move backwards, I want to continuously fall forward, and when I give you these limited chances, you better well help us move the chains or sustain drives. And he did all that with uh, an anemic passing game, you know, to boot. So, I mean, how bad was Kentucky's passing attack last year, according to your data? Uh, well, according to my data, anyone's data, the, the, you know, uh, the traditional metrics, my <laughs> metrics, whatever you look at, they were one of the worst in the Power Five. There's just no getting around it. They were absolutely terrible. Um Eddie Graham was absolutely handcuffed. In my opinion, I think Terry Wilson was a little bit more of a, a gun-shy passer. He had to be goaded to take chances downfield. At the same time, it's not like he had any guys he could really trust. Um, so in addition to the, the stale scheme, the iffy quarterback play, and just, just damn well no one to throw the ball to, of course, that's the result you've got. Um, moving forward, I would like to see, obviously, there's going to be a lot of emphasis in the uh, Big Blue Nation, they are going to hear the phrase marriage between the run and the pass. So it's setting up the outside zone and using the play action boots, kind of like what you're seeing from Cleveland, from the LA Rams, especially because that's where Lee and Comb, the new offensive coordinator, is coming from. So it's going to be a little bit more balanced. You would like to think a little bit more quarterback friendly in that sense where, you know, you're, you're not going to be so obvious you know the tendencies of Kentucky. Oh, okay, it's second and ten. They're either going to run a counter or a screen or you know something a little dinky and dunky where they have no ability to stretch the field. Well, this time you can do play-action shots off these outside zones and really sucker in people because they're a little bit more diagnosable um, from the defensive side as opposed to um, you know a gap play that can maybe take an extra beat to develop. So as everybody's moving the same way, so um, as effective as it is, it still, you know, tips the hand. And, of course, Alabama had a lot of success running a lot of different play actions this past season. So um, even though there is a lot of potential in terms of, you know, there's nowhere they can go down, it's only going to go up, I'm just – I'm a little bit apprehensive to say how much better it can be because, again, they have a lot of questions at the quarterback position. Wondell Robinson, fantastic addition. It would have been even better if he originally committed to years. But here's the thing. This offense has had, you know, like I said, a very deplorable group of receivers who just cannot win one-on-one. They're not necessarily fast. UK's best passing offense in the last decade was in 2016. And what did that group have? Besides a competent quarterback, they had two 
fast receivers that could beat guys one-on-one in Juice Johnson and Jeff Bidette. So they have this advantage once again. And like I said, when you have someone like Chris Rodriguez to really take the attention of the defense and you have the speed that can beat guys one-on-one, the big plays can follow. But with the questions at the quarterback position with Bo Allen, with Joey Gatewood, who when he came in, when he was at Auburn, he was a glorified wildcat option. Nothing more. That's a hard guy to try and mold into a pro-style passer. So Will Tevis is also going to be in the discussion. But since he's enrolling so late, you know, he, he was not here during the spring. Um, I'm just really questioning his, his ability to grasp the offense and then lead this unit um, of guys he's known for basically two months. So, um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of concerns there, but I think it's going to head in the right direction overall. 